Uh, welcome, friends. If you are watching us live here and you'd like to join our discussion, please feel free to come on over to the Insight Timer app where we're going to be interacting. Uh, welcome, welcome. We'll wait a minute or so for our community to join today's session. Thank you for being here. Hey, Rev. Good day to you. Hey, Raul. Oh, so happy you made it. So nice to be on a, a time zones that work a little better <laughs> for, or yes, schedules and different time zones so we can actually connect. Wonderful. Hey, Wolfgang, great to see you again. Ah, hi, my beloved. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, Martha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How is our sound? Can you hear me well? And if you are um, on a device that only lets you see the limited view, you might find uh, it more visually enjoyable to switch to a device that allows you to see more of a widescreen view. So you're not just maybe seeing part of my face. I have the widescreen on today, so. Okay, great, 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 great. Ah, all right. Just gonna make sure sound is working. Everything's good. Thank you for your feedback. Okay, we'll get started. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for choosing to be here today, to be part of this community experience, and also choosing to be here, to be alive. Thanks, Mary. <clears throat> for anyone that I'm getting uh, to meet for the first time, my name is Selena Layel. I have many recordings here on the app, a course, Yogic Practices for a Peaceful Life. I lead live sessions, usually each week. And we also have a circle on the app. The circle is called Love Heals All. If you'd like to join us there, Love Heals All. It's a beautiful space for us to be authentic, to support each other, to share uplifting content, and also just to, to keep it real. Um, we know that life is not always uh, pretty and happy, and it's, it's all of it. And so it's a space for us to, to be in that authenticity and to be supported by one another. Ah, okay. Let's just take a breath together. Let's inhale. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale slowly and deeply. Exhale. Inhale. Wonderful. We'll close the eyes or just have the gaze soft if that's more comfortable. Continue to be aware of your body breathing and start to deepen the breath. Relax the jaw, the face. We'll just spend a few moments welcoming the mind to be more present, maybe softening some of that tension that we carry before we move into our chat today. Feel the shoulders and the arms relaxing down. Bring your awareness all the way down through the body until you start to really sense your feet. Even if it's a sensation of numbness, bring your attention to 
the sensation in the feet. And imagine as you breathe in, you're drawing the breath all the way through the body into the feet. And as you exhale, there's this sense of letting go or just giving yourself permission to be here right now. There's always something to take our attention away. Inhale, the breath fills the body. Exhale, feel the sense of, ah, it's okay to be here right now for these next moments. Slowly move your awareness through your body up to the heart center. And just notice whatever you're feeling in your heart. We're so often judgmental of ourselves if we don't feel a certain way, whether that's happy or free or empowered. So whatever you're feeling right now in this moment, can you take a deep breath and just give yourself permission to be just as you are. You may even place a hand on your heart and just say to yourself, it's okay. Even if you're feeling fantastic today, just this loving kindness of saying, it's okay. It's okay. We'll take one more conscious breath in and out together. <sighs> and when you're ready, slowly open the eyes. You can move the body a little, maybe take a little twist. Ah, oh, move the head, the neck, the spine. <sighs> I'm just going to shake it out a little bit more here. Feel free to join me. Give a little handshake. We've got a disappearing and reappearing mic. This is my magic trick for you today. <laughs> just shake it out. Just shake your body up. We hold so much rigidity so often. Many of us do. So just give yourself a little shake. Even if you feel like you're a, a great you know, yoga asana practitioner and your body is really flexible, is your mind flexible? Are your emotions flexible? Or do you live with a sense of rigidity? even if your muscles have uh, more flexibility. Ah, lovely. All right. So again, if you're not here with us live on the Insight Timer, I invite you to come over to the Insight Timer app so we can be in this discussion together. Today's topic is a conversation. It's a place for us to really just have, have a chat to speak about anything that's present in your mind or your heart from this heart-centered place. And, and I, I invite you to kind of check in with yourself. You have so much wisdom. You are so wise. You are innately intelligent, intuitive, powerful. You're so powerful. So I invite you to check in with yourself. You know yourself better than anyone else. How can I bring to this conversation maybe any challenges or inquiry or curiosities that I'm having in a heart-centered way? And this is not always the way that we do things, right? It's very healthy to just be messy and just let it all out. Today, however, though, especially in this time where many of us are going to be with our families in ways that we aren't normally or maybe with friends in ways that we aren't normally Let's start to practice being in our lives from this heart-centered place, even when it comes to our challenges. So I invite you to just take a moment and just look inside and say, what, what questions, what inquiries am I inside of right now that I'd like to be inside of community with? Is there something specific that you'd like to receive feedback on from me, from our community, 
participating today. Maybe there's some place you've been feeling stuck and it'd be nice to have a bit of a sounding board or another perspective. And as you sit with that and check in, hey Jason, how can I bring this to our community time together today, our discussion from my heart? So I'll take a few more moments and then you can just drop in the chat Whatever's coming up for you, anything that you'd like to share, that you're here to, to maybe receive some feedback around. I forgot my, uh, my glass downstairs, so I have my big water bottle that I carry everywhere with me. All right, Rev sharing something. How to let go of that which there is no control over situations. Mm. Let's just take a breath together, Rev. And anyone else, I think this is something that most of us, if not all of us, uh, can work with. So let's just, we do a lot of energy work here together. And I don't mean that in the sense of something woo. I mean, when we do this kind of deep reflection, we have this opportunity to really transform what's happening inside of us. So how do I let go of that which I have no control over? So let's just start with the body. Become aware of how your body is right now. And you don't need to readjust it or judge it. And you don't even need to close the eyes. With the eyes open, just become aware. And again, this is for each of us who wish to engage in this together. Become aware of how your body is. And maybe that just means feeling what sensations are in your body right now. Notice your breathing. Is your breathing deep and relaxed? Is your breathing shallow? Are you unconsciously holding the breath? Is your jaw clenched? Are you tight in your hands, your belly? Just notice your body right now. There's so many messages in the body for our growth and evolution and having more of what we want in our lives. And then let's take a deep breath together. Whatever you're feeling in your body, let's just take a breath. So let's inhale slowly and deeply together. And then hold your breath for just a moment. Relax the body at the same time. And now exhale slowly through your nose. This is a little different for some of us. So exhale slowly through the nose until all the air is out. Inhale slowly and deeply. Hold the breath for a moment. And then through the nose, exhale slowly until all of the air has been gently pressed out. You might even feel the upper abdomen in this area of the diaphragm kind of contracting in here. And then we'll again inhale. Pause and hold the breath. And exhale through the nose until all of the air has been expelled. And then consciously relax the jaw. You can breathe naturally. <sighs> so why did we do this? One of the first, uh, I don't know about you guys, hopefully my sound and my video are matching because they're not matching on my side. And I know that can be a little annoying, but hopefully you can still see me and hear me clearly. So when we're consciously breathing in this way, when we're becoming aware of what's happening in our physiology, we have an opportunity to become more mindful, to have more of an experience of being present. And the more present we are, the less the mind is grasping for control and to change things outside of our control the more my body is unconsciously holding tension and the more I am thinking thoughts that cause me to feel distressed, the more I kind of come into this tight little ball of existence. So I start with my physiology so that I can calm the nervous system down. The more calm my nervous system is, the more clearly my mind is going to be able to think. 
So now we take this time, maybe you take 10 breaths or maybe you take five, 10, 20 minutes to calm your nervous system by way of mindfulness practices, maybe just becoming aware of your body breathing, maybe taking some time for a body scan. And once your nervous system has moved into more of a relaxed state, then we can become aware of the mind. Okay, what's happening in my mind? What thoughts am I allowing to think me, right? Because most of us don't really have this experience of conscious thinking. We feel like our thoughts are thinking us. We might not think of it that way, but it feels like our mind is just happening and we don't have control. That scary thought, that painful thought, that stressful thought is just happening and we just believe it and we live with it as if it's reality. So what's happening in my mind? Yes, Rev, exactly. So moving from sympathetic, fight or flight, to parasympathetic, rest and digest. And the breath is one of the most uh, immediate tools that we have available to us for that, especially when we focus on long exhalations, because long exhalations help to activate the vagus nerve, and the vagus nerve will in turn turn on the parasympathetic nervous system. So, and again, this is for all of us. I know that Rev posed this question, or Rev J, sorry, I'm not, I'm not sure how you would like to be uh, um, addressed. Please feel free to uh, let me know. So what's happening in my mind? Oh yes, and what I was saying is that even though Rev posed the question, this is something we can all work with. Probably. So what is happening in my mind? What thoughts Am I thinking and believing that are contributing to how I'm perceiving the situation? Because let's just really look at it for a minute here. Most everything is out of our control. Most everything is out of our control. It's our perception that usually gives us some sense of control, right? Okay, well, I have a job. I have a job, so I know I'm taken care of and my finances are okay, right? because I have this job. We can lose that job tomorrow. We can lose it today. It's our perception, thinking that we will continue to have a job that allows us to feel more relaxed. It's not that we have control over the future. A relationship, right? If you feel really solid in your romantic relationship or your, your relationship with anyone, you're not dwelling on the things you can't control. You're in that flow state of just enjoying or being grateful. But let's say there's a little bit of friction in that relationship, some conflict, something that makes it feel rocky. Your perception may start to change and you might say, oh, well, well, what if this person doesn't want to be friends with me anymore? Or, or what, if, what if my partner doesn't want to be with me or they want to separate? It's the mind, the perception that starts to shift our relationship to this situation that we never actually have control over. It's perception. Now, of course, we do have control over certain things. Right now, I have the control over picking up this massive water bottle and drinking some water, which I'm going to do. That's a conscious choice, right? I have control over that. I have control over who I choose to spend time with. I have control over um, what I read, what movies I watch what I do with my body. I have control over many of these things, but most of the things that we're fretting over that we don't have control over, we've never had control over them. Even our bodies, you could say, well, well, my health, my health is, is, um, is challenged right now. We've never had control over the ultimate outcome of our health. We can do our very best to nourish these bodies, to put, to put live, nourishing, healthy food into them, to drink water, to take, take the different supplements or herbs that really enliven our cells and our tissues and our, and our brains. We have control over these things, but we don't have ultimate control. Uh, you know, even if I take the best care of my body, that doesn't mean I'm not going to transition out of the body tomorrow. So we work with calming the nervous system down and then we become aware of what's happening in the mind. What thoughts am I thinking? What perceptions am I holding that are making me feel this contraction probably around a situation that I've never really had control over? 
okay, so now what? Now I'm aware that my perception is causing some of this suffering, right? So what can I do next? Rev, I'll ask you. If you become aware that your perception and your mind is causing is causing this, this contraction, these maybe feelings of helplessness or fear or, or anger or frustration, if you become aware that that's what's going on inside, what do you think you might be able to do for yourself in that moment? Jason's trying to pause. Hey, trajectory, great to see you. Hey, my peace. Yes, yes, happy solstice. So, Rev, if you become aware that you're in this experience of perception, interrupt the thoughts by doing and breathing, grounding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like Jason's saying, just becoming aware is a huge step, right? Just becoming aware is huge. And, and for anyone who's kind of newer to my, my teaching style and, and my teacher's style that I teach, um, awareness is key. It's the first step to any transformation. If we're not aware of something, we can't consciously choose to do something else or to transform it. Yeah. And Maria is saying to acknowledge the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. There are many ways that we can be with ourselves once we have that awareness. What I'd like to offer today as a tool that, that will transform our lives. Yeah, and Rev saying, stay in the here and now and uh, you know, maybe feeling into what's behind that feeling. Yeah, compassion, compassion. Who here has ever become aware that you're doing something you don't want to be doing or that isn't giving you the results that you're wanting and you start to get hard on yourself? You start to beat yourself up like, oh, oh, I, I shouldn't be doing this. I know I shouldn't be doing this. I've got to do something different. Or uh, uh, this isn't the way it's supposed to be. I need to change. You know, who, who, who kind of knows that experience? You become aware and the response is maybe to kind of beat yourself up a little. Oh, beautiful, Rev. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Rev Shannon, he goes, oh, he, they, he, she, forgive me, I don't actually know your... Um, your gender identity, um, but to go into the heart mouth, heart focused breathing. Good, good. Yeah, so compassion, compassion. So many of us aren't even familiar with how to do this inside of ourselves, but that's it. And it's not the only way. It's not the only way, but compassion. Yeah, Jason, forgiveness and gratitude. I'll preach that till the day I die. But how how much do we generously give that to ourselves, right? But it sounds like, Rev, like you are being with yourself on that way. That's so beautiful because that's where the transformation happens. We can think about this in, also in terms of energy. If I become aware that I'm doing something that I really don't want to be doing, that's not giving me the results that I want, and I start to be hard on myself or I feel like, oh, why am I here again? Do you think my energy is, is contracting or is it expanding? If I get really tense and I'm like, oh, how can I be here? Am I, am I contracting and resisting or am I opening and expanding? She, thank you. Yeah, well, contracting, right? If I'm in resistance and if I'm judging myself, if I'm feeling like I'm doing something wrong, I'm contracting. The energy is becoming, you could say, tighter, smaller, denser, heavier. When I move into compassion, and you can also think about it, like, like think about it like this. If my, if my hands are totally locked up like this, we'll use this as an expression of compa- uh, contraction right now. If I'm totally locked up like this and my fingers are really gripping and wrapped around each other, I can't even move. Like if I'm really squeezing, I can't pull my hands apart. I don't have the opportunity to, to do something differently, to create something new because I'm so tight in this, immobile place of contraction. When I'm in compassion with myself, oh, wow, here I am again, doing this thing that that doesn't feel good or, or doing this thing that I know doesn't serve me in the highest or wow, here I am having a human experience. 
Here I am feeling afraid. Here I am feeling frustrated. Here I am wishing things were different than they are and it's so painful. When I move into that place of acknowledgement and kindness and compassion with myself, what happens? Am I here or do I start to be more here? Am I in that immobile place where I'm locked up in, in contraction? Or do I start to create a little more spaciousness? Oh, my beautiful journey. Yeah, my peace. Yeah. I feel the expansion exactly. That compassion creates a, a spaciousness for us to take new action for us to choose something differently. And Reb sharing, compassion is the easiest renewal feeling I can tap into. Funny more for others than myself. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's why, that's why we have platforms like this where we can remind each other and, and, and even learn things. You know, how many, how many wonderful, wonderful practices and techniques and meditations are here on the app to help us cultivate greater self-compassion? And there are so many because it's not always easy, right? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks so much for, for bringing this to the, to the conversation today. Yeah. Surrendering helps me to expand my he says. Yeah. And, and surrender. <laughs> surrender is often the most difficult thing. So more power to you <laughs> if you're able to surrender. But yeah, if we want to speak about things also in, in another way when we're facing what to do with, um, you know, the feelings and the thoughts that come up over situations that we can't control. Okay, how can I be more accepting of this situation? And for me, compassion is always the key because, uh, you know, if I'm judging someone else or judging what someone else is doing and I'm maybe there's a, a someone in my life, a family member, that is living in a way that I perceive as destructive that I perceive as harmful. And I wish with all of my heart that they would be different with themselves, that they would take better care of themselves, that they would change how they are. And I create so much contraction and so much suffering for myself because I'm resisting what is. I am not that person. I'm not in their body. I do not know their karma, if you want to take it to that place. I don't know their soul contract, if you want to go there. So how do I have compassion for whatever they're navigating? Because I can't even know what it is truly, even though I might think I do. How can I have compassion for their experience and then practice acceptance? Because Rev, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. In the situations where you're feeling contraction come up around not being able to control the situation, do you find it um, is in regards to uh, like people more often, or is it in regards to situations like, a, you know, money or health or something like that? Ah, 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 okay. Okay, okay good, good. So, so here's another way we can also become aware of it. When I am having that experience of the, the fear and the judgment that I have and even the sadness and frustration and anger that I might feel when I watch someone I love behaving in a certain way that I do not believe to be healthy. Am I contracting or expanding? And we know the answer, right? We, we've been going over this. I contract. When I'm in non-acceptance of another's choices, I contract inside of myself. When I'm in the resistance, the judgment, and the non-acceptance, and whatever else comes with that, I'm like this. And if I'm like this, and we can all ask ourselves this, and I invite you to ask yourself, when I'm like this, can I freely express the love that I am? When I'm like this, can I freely express the love that I am? I hear that now. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Rev was sharing, my, my hubby and I are not on the same health path and it's scary watching it. Yeah. So, so two opportunities that are many, but you know, we could look at it as two opportunities. One is an opportunity to be compassionate with yourself and the part of you that's feeling afraid or upset, right? Hold that part of you, hold your own heart, physically hold your own heart if you can move your body. And just say, I'm here and I love you. And, and be compassionate with yourself and the part of you or the parts of you that are feeling afraid. And then become aware, okay, when I'm in that judgment and that fear and that contraction around his choices, I can't fully express my love with him. Not with, to, for. Whenever, whenever we are caught in contraction for any reason, we cannot fully express the love that we are. It's kind of like when we're in that full expansion of the love we are, where this this open, open, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> this open vessel of love. And then that contraction and judgment causes us to kind of close off our heart. So it's not it's not an easy practice, but but it is available to us, meaning we can use these different techniques and ways of being and reflecting to create a little more ease in our own hearts and then just to love the other. I, I know this experience my whole life, the exact situation that we're speaking to. And I think many of us do, right? Because when you have family and you care about family, we're not all the same. We don't all make the same choices. And it can be really scary to watch people that you care about and love um, do certain things to their bodies or their lives. So, so um, loving them, just to love them. Love them and lead by example. And just keep loving them. And who knows, maybe them just feeling that deep love from you might be enough of, of the, the energetic support that they're needing to make a shift for themselves. Maybe feeling that freedom of love from us and seeing how we are learning to love ourselves. Not just because we have a strict diet, but because we truly love ourselves. Maybe that is like an energetic sharing or exchange with the other for them to remember, to learn how to love themselves. Maybe not, maybe so. So again, thank you so much for bringing that to our conversation today. I know many of you, um, yeah, exactly, my love. Be the model, be the model. Okay, so I know many of you shared comments earlier. Uh, I'm going to invite you to, to share if you have something like to bring to this discussion again, because I know that uh, I can only get back so far in the comments and then they just get cut off, unfortunately. Um, maybe next time what we should do, oh, I have a great idea. The next time we do this, um, please, if you're not already in our circle, Love Heals All, join our circle. And we will, uh, you can each share something you'd like to bring to our conversation in our circle. And then I can have that, uh, have that list of questions or conversation starters uh, next to me. And that way I won't lose your, your inquiries in the chat. Of course, Raul, of course, you know, you're always welcome to, you have my, you have my time. Of course. Ah, yes. How are you? How are you feeling, my loves, after what we started our conversation with? Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, Ken. Uh, oh, so circles, if you're not familiar, I don't know if you're asking what the name of the circle is or what a circle is. Um, but here on the app, we have circles that are essentially like community chat rooms. <laughs> uh, but we really come together in a beautiful way as community. And our circle is called Love Heals All. Love Heals All. So yeah, what are you feeling inside? And Rev, what, what are you feeling inside after bringing this? But I'd love to hear from all of you. How are you? Oh, they're called groups now. Thank you. Yes, yes, I, I recall that. It's all the all the um, evolution of the app. Yeah, we got to keep up. 
Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So what else? What else do we bring into the table today? Oh, I love. I don't. I don't. I wish I. I can't even express when I get to see your little profile pictures floating at the bottom of my screen. And many of you have your your face. So I can actually see your face. It just it, my heart becomes so tender. I mean, I feel your presence here, even not getting to see you. But oh, my my heart. I just love you so. I just love you so. And when I get to see a moment of your physicality like this, it just, it almost brings me to tears, honestly. It does bring me to tears. <laughs> uh, I just love you. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful you're here. And I'm so grateful we're here together. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Rainbow. Oh, wonderful. Yes, yes. Warm, warm welcome to anyone here for the first time. Warm welcome to everyone, especially those here for the first time. I welcome you into my heart and into this beautiful space that we create as community. Ah. Oh, beautiful, Rev. Thank you. Thank you for being an embodiment of that. Rev is sharing that it doesn't always feel to be vulnerable that something moved her to share today. I'm so glad you did. Thank you. If that's one thing we cultivate together, it's greater vulnerability and authenticity. And there really is just a welcoming here, a welcoming of all parts of ourselves. It can feel so difficult to look at the things about ourselves that we don't like or painful emotions. Oh, I love that, Johnny. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. That's a mindfulness practice. Johnny is sharing that I sat and watched salmon swimming up a small stream that provided a great inner peace. That is mindfulness. To allow our thoughts, our attention to focus on something in a way that it brings us into a state of presence. And I know many of us, we think about present moment, right? We have this concept of the present moment. And maybe some of us even know the feeling of present moment. And when we think about present moment, we think about it as now, right? Okay, this, this now moment. And something that really helps me to really kind of have a visceral experience of what does that really mean, present moment? What does that mean to be present? And it's when I actually have an experience of my presence, the presence of life that I am, the presence of love that I am in beingness. And that is when the mind is here, not in the future, not in the past, not in all of the judgments that it loves so much to create drama and discernment and differentiation, but in this spaciousness of being. The present moment is an experience of your own presence. It's an experience of fullness, not just because your mind is not running someplace else, but because you actually have an experience of the self, the presence that you are, the light that you are, the energy that you are, the prana that you are, the life force that you are. Presence, presence. Oh, hmm, interesting, Judy. I know there are a lot of, uh, what is it called? I can't think of the, the, the term right now. But you know, like where things are automatically monitored rather than people, which is helpful considering we have 20 million users now. How incredible is that? 20 million users on the app. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Jeanette, being vulnerable is very difficult. This group and others help a lot. I'm feeling safer and stronger, putting out my big toe in the river of connection. Oh, beautiful, my love. Beautiful. Okay. So who else would like to, to share or bring something to the table, to our discussion today? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, 
Yeah, Gunny was sharing something that I know many can relate to. You know, sharing good to be here. I don't have family, so the holidays are tough. I feel lonely. Yeah. Will you place your hands on your heart with me? And whenever we whenever we work with one one of our community members, we can all do the work together. Let's just place the hands on the heart. And just take a deep breath. And just say to yourself something kind, something loving that resonates for you. Maybe it's, I love you. I'm grateful for you. You are a gift. You are beautiful inside and out. You are such a beautiful person, a good person, a beautiful soul. Let's all take these next few moments to just say any of these kinds of kind things to yourself. You may even wish to close your eyes. We'll be here for just a few moments. Just really speak to yourself with any and all loving thoughts that you can think of. I love your laughter. I love your smile. I love your beautiful mind. I love your heart. I'm so grateful for, for my job. I'm so grateful for this community. I'm so grateful for my body. I'm so grateful for nature. Just say these grateful and loving things to yourself and directly to yourself. And breathe deeply. Imagine that that speaking to yourself in this way is actually creating a sense of spaciousness inside of you, maybe a warmth in your heart. Thank you. How does that feel? Daniela, how does that feel to, to be with yourself in that way? It's natural to feel lonely, and so often we feel lonely because of our perception. Again, coming back to this idea of perception, we see people having a certain life and we compare our life and have this feeling that something is, is missing. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, brought tears. During much of the first year of the pandemic, I spent most of my time alone. Even for the first two months, I didn't. I was living in a place where my family was just five minutes away, but I, I didn't hug them. I couldn't be inside with them or anything for two months. I was alone. I didn't touch another human being for two months. And um, most of that first year, I spent a lot of time alone. And, and I could have uh, really been in a lot of great suffering um, but I'm so grateful because I had started working with all of these, these really loving ways of being with myself. Every day I would wake up and put my hands on my heart and just say, I love you. I love you, Selena. I love you, beautiful soul. I'm so grateful for you. And I would just continue to be in this space of being loving with myself. And I started to notice that the feelings of loneliness that I have lived with most of my life they were, they were gone. There was this fullness inside of me. And even to this day, I, although sometimes I do feel lonely, um, I, I, it's rare. And it's because I've spent so much time and, and, and energy filling myself with my own love. And I don't mean to make this sound um, abstract. There are ways that we can actually be loving with ourselves and speak to ourselves. So it's like we're filling our own heart. We're filling our own cup. And although we might feel lonely at times or look at someone else's life and think they've got it perfectly made and something's wrong with us, it, when we are full of our own love, we don't have those same responses. So thank you so much for, for sharing that and my heart is with you and anyone who's feeling that, that loneliness, especially in these times of the holidays. And, and I'd also like to uh, share 
a quote that has served me deeply and is one of my favorite quotes, and it's, comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. And many of us compare our lives, especially around the holidays, to the lives of others. We see people's picture-perfect lives with their families and their pets and their Christmas trees or whatever they're celebrating, you know, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever they're celebrating, right? And we have this idea of how, how they must have a great life and there's something really wrong with ours and it can cause so much pain. So how do we be compassionate with ourselves, loving with ourselves, kind with ourselves, and, and focus on, on, on doing sweet things for ourselves or making connection, being in community like this, even if it doesn't look another way? How can I be in community? How can I experience this love? So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I think I saw that Marthys, uh, I think it was Marthys, I missed because there were many uh, comments coming through, but I think you shared that your husband is in the hospital. And why don't we just all take a moment for Marthys and her husband and family and anyone who's having a, a moment of challenge like this in their family, let's just take a moment. Let's just stop typing for a moment. Place your hands on your heart or just your awareness on your heart. Let's just take a breath together. And just give yourself permission. Give your heart permission to just be. And if this resonates for you, I invite you to become aware that we are in a, a quantum field of energy. We are literally all connected in this quantum field. My beloved Saima sometimes speaks about it for our minds to kind of imagine like a net. We're all inside of this net and we're all connected inside of this net, this grid, this quantum field. And so even though we're not physically together, we are most definitely together right now. So we can just take a moment. There are 88 of us together. And we can just imagine that there's a light in our heart that moves from our heart to the heart of another in this session right now, and then to the another heart and another heart until there's this beautiful thread of light, you could even say golden light, that is connecting all of our hearts as one. And we can do it instantaneously. We don't need to imagine every 88 person, you know, but just, just to feel that, this beautiful light connecting all of our hearts. And you may even imagine that in this, this loving, kind space of our connection, of our one heart, that we can draw on that love from this, this space together and fill our own cup right now with whatever we're needing. Calm, peace, strength, love. Yes, and I see um, FF is asking, Rainbow, do you go on walks? Oop, the comments are gone now. Um, but this is something that if you're not already, already practicing it, or maybe you've just forgotten, as we do forget many of the things that help us the most, go be in nature. Even if it's cold where you are, just go spend some time in nature. Take a walk, get some fresh air. Have your, your feet on the earth. Breathe in, breathe out. Nature is such a healer, even when it's winter, such a healer. Mm. Ah, and thank you for, for that beautiful moment to be in our one heart together. So we still have about 10 minutes. I know we've really only gotten to one question in depth. Um, I, I saw someone earlier say, "How do you, how do you uh, look at or describe or define true love?" And uh, it's perfect. Uh, um, I was just on a course with my beloved teacher Simon for the last four days. 
And there was a point where Ma said, if you, if you, something like this, it's not verbatim, but it, the way that I heard, heard what Ma was saying was if you ever come across a, a teacher or a master or someone who, who says that they can definitively define what love is, run the other direction. <laughs> because, because love is, is apparently something that we can't define. I say apparently because here I am trying to define it in the non-definition. <laughs> I love the teaching on, on energy, and this is a helpful way for me to understand what love is. There are two energies in all of creation, and everything falls inside of that. One is contraction, and one is expansion. Or one is fear, and one is love. So we can, we can look at, well, what is love? Love is expansion. Love is pure presence. Love is undefinable. And when we put a definition on love, that's when we know it's the human mind. That's when we know it's the ego. When we put a definition on love. Oh, if you really loved me, you would do this for me. Oh, if you really loved me, you, uh, there wouldn't be infidelity in our relationship. Oh, if you really loved me, you wouldn't act that way. Oh, if you really loved me, this is how you would be. These are conditions. These are beliefs. These are judgments. These are not love. These are how the human mind tries to understand uh, a profound experience. And I could go on and on there, but I'll... I'll Come bring our one to a close. Allison, my love, you shared something uh, just a moment ago, and I want to find this. As Allison shares, my heart feels broken, so hard to fill it with self love. Oh, it all just leaks out. Oh. Mm. <sighs> just be with that right now in this loving space of being together. And just place your hands on your heart. And just hold your heart. Just hold your precious heart. Just be right here with your heart right now. No judging. No judgment. Stop judging yourself. Stop judging the situation. Can you just hold your heart? I know we have a, a chat today, so I'll reach out to you after some some sessions, some one-on-one -on -one sessions. I'll reach out. I love you. I love you. Hmm. 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 Yes, Julia. Julia is sharing that when feelings arise, it's okay. And we can just hold them and say, you're welcome feelings. And uh, for anyone who um, hasn't experienced it, I have a recording here on the app. I think it's called Self-Soothing Practice. You can find it on my profile page under the tracks session, Self-Soothing Practice. And it's a, a really tender practice to give ourselves permission to feel whatever we're feeling, whether that's rage or shame or sadness, to just be with whatever we're feeling in a, in a kind way. Yeah, thanks, Julia. All right, any, any last um, share or inquiry to have together before we complete? How's your heart, my loves? How's your heart being here together like this? Mm. 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 
You're so, so fortunate. Okay, FF has a question, a different topic. Any ideas for anxiety? Absolutely. <laughs> Many ideas. Um, first of all, I do have a recording here on the app called Anxiety Relief Breath Technique. Again, you can find it under the track session under my profile page. Anxiety Relief Breath Technique. And this breathing technique is based on a, an ancient breathing technique, uh, pranayama practice, yogic breathing practice, called uh, Brahmari Pranayam. And it, essentially, it is, it is a humming breathing practice that helps to turn on that um, vagus nerve and then the parasympathetic nervous system. So it takes us from fight or flight and those anxious feelings into an experience of more calm and ease. So uh, there's so much we could say about anxiety. I think I'd like to just bring a few points then. First of all, there are, of course, um, uh, anxiety condition, conditions that can be uh, diagnosed. Yes, there are actual conditions of anxiety. What I find in um, the many, many years, many years of working with people one-on-one -on -one and in group settings and in my own personal experience of anxiety, more often than not, what we are labeling as anxiety is actually repression of emotion. Often what we call anxiety is like an, it's, it, um, anxiety becomes like an umbrella term for emotion that has not been released. It's kind of like um, if I feel really, uh, really frustrated or really angry about something and I don't find a way to healthily express that, not necessarily to a person, but just to let that energy, those feelings move, and I put it and I just kind of like distract myself or I, you know, go out for a drink or eat some food or I play video games or I start to exercise or I just get into work, whatever I do to not have to feel it, it's still inside of my body. And it's kind of like this buzzing, you know, it's an energy. So it starts to build up. There's this, this buzzing of energy in my body. And then let's say something else happens and I feel really hurt by it and I feel sad, but again, Maybe I don't have the awareness in that moment or I don't have the tools to really tend to my own emotions. So that sadness isn't going anywhere either. So I have more energy building up inside of me. And now it's the energy of sadness and there's anger and frustration. It's all just buzzing around inside of my system. And before I know it, I feel agitated. I feel anxious. I can't focus. I just feel like I want to crawl out of my skin. I feel so uncomfortable. But it's not this blanket term of anxiety. It's all of this energy inside of me that needs to move, that wants to move. One, one way we can kind of think about this, uh, if you've ever had the experience of um, maybe feeling really anxious and then you cry and you feel lighter after, or maybe you feel really agitated, really uncomfortable inside, and then maybe you just like scream or something and you feel a little lighter. I, I, I'm not saying you have to scream to release emotional energy, um, but if that's what's happening and you notice yourself feeling lighter, it's a great example for our minds to see, oh yeah, when I had a bit of an emotional release, I didn't feel as anxious. So that's one thing to, oh, Okay, great, FF. Well, for the sake of time, I won't go into an in-depth explanation. FF's asking, how do you let those feelings pass? Again, I would invite the self-soothing practice. This is, this is a technique for us to be able to feel our emotions, to train ourselves, because most of us have not been taught how to feel. It sounds ridiculous because emotions are the driving human force, right? Uh, for almost all human beings. Emotion drives us to do what we want, what we don't want. It, it moves us in our lives. Yet we have almost zero education. You know, we have great academic education. We have physical education. We learn all of these things in school about the mind and how to use technology and all of these different things. But we don't learn how to feel or how to constructively use our feelings, or how to tend to our emotions, or how to be present with emotions when they come up. 
We get told things like, oh, it's okay, don't cry. Oh, don't be angry. Oh, oh, you should, you should, don't think about that. Just don't even, don't even put, don't even think about it. Just go do something else. We, are, we do not have good emotional education. So you're not alone um, in asking this question. How do I feel these feelings? How do I let them move? So the self-soothing practice, uh, feel free, if you're not already in our circle, to join our circle. And you can ask more there. You can always reach out to me personally as well. Send me a DM or reach out to me an email. And um, we can go further with that also. Oh, great, great. Amy's sharing that Hannah Brown has a live session on yin yoga in 30 minutes and uh, that she's worked with her for anxiety. So it sounds like it's been helpful. So absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Amy. And, and, and that's another thing that can really help. Sometimes just moving the body is a way to move the energy that's causing anxiousness. Because it may not be an emotional experience that we need to cry about or that we need to yell about. Maybe it's just energy. And so sometimes we just need to move our bodies. That's why for me, my, my physical practices are like key for my mental health. Because if I don't move my body regularly, I start to get really anxious. I start to feel like, oh, you know, stuff starts to feel really wonky inside, not just physically, right? So move your body, use the self-soothing technique as a way to start to practice being able to be with and release those emotions and be kind with yourself. The next time you feel really anxious, you know, you might even just say to yourself, okay, what's going on? What's going on, self? What's going on, ego? What's going on, emotions? What's going on, FF? What's happening inside that's making you feel this way? And if you really sit and listen, without a bunch of judgment, which our mind loves to do, if you really just sit and listen and give yourself permission to be a human being, to have feelings, to feel messy, because that's part of life, you might be really surprised that all of a sudden there's this voice that says, well, I feel so angry, or I just feel so sad, or I just feel so lost. And in that moment, you don't have to try to fix anything. There's nothing to fix in that moment. There's no problem to solve in that moment. See, when we're in a moment of distress and we try to fix the problem because of how we're feeling, it's like we immediately abandon ourselves. It's like a toddler. A toddler's crying about something that fell over. Or they, they fall. In that moment, they don't need you to fix everything. They just need to be held. You seem to be taken in your arms and just held with love and presence. And that, that expression of the inner child, if you will, is within each of us. But what do we do? We try to fix everything in our lives so that we don't have to feel pain. And that can cause even more anxiety and even more tension and even more feelings of everything being wrong. What if we learn to just hold ourselves and then we feel more relaxed, we feel more loved, we feel okay. And then our minds and our brains function, function with more ease, more, more uh, I don't want to say efficiency, but it's almost like if we, if we get ourselves in that calming nervous system response by just holding ourselves when we feel distressed, then we do think more clearly. Oh, that's great. My these are sharing. I play sound to relieve different soundtracks to release difficult emotions. Yeah, music. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for sharing your wisdom. Okay, thank you, beloveds. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time and your wisdom and your vulnerability and your beautiful heart. Thank you for your donations. When you when you donate, you support me. You do. Your donations, part of the donation goes to me and part of the donation goes to Insight Timer. And it is a help in my life. It allows me to take care of myself, to, to do whatever each of us do to stay alive. So... I'm deeply grateful for 
your financial contributions, for your love. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, you can join our circle, our group, our group on the app here, Love Heals All. Love Heals All. We'll be together again. Oh, this is, wow, it's the 20th. Uh, blessed holidays to each and every one. I think, did I put one more session on for this week? Because I knew the holidays were here. Let's see if I, I did that. I know I had the intention to do that. Um, I did, I did. So we have one more session together before uh, Christmas for anyone who celebrates Christmas. Um, our next session is coming up in on the 23rd, the 23rd at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Oh, and look at that. My, my mind was thinking ahead for us. It's the self-soothing practice live. So we'll actually get to practice the self-soothing practice a couple of days before Christmas together. You can go to my profile page to see my live sessions. You can hit the little bell icon, I think is what it is, to get notifications. Um, I don't know, FF. I'm not sure. I know that's the way it used to be, but I'm not sure how that works now. I'm not sure. Ah, so yes, see you on the 23rd, at least North American time for or this hemisphere for uh, our self-soothing practice. And uh, thank you. Just thank you again. And our, our next time together after that, um, we're going to do a, a bit of a ritual for an, on New Year's Eve. So we'll be together again on New Year's Eve. So I love you. Blessings to you, to your life, to your family. Remember, you have so much available on this app to support you. Everything I have on the recordings and everything from so many other wonderful beings, instructors on this app, you have so much to support you. And, and just remember that so often just shifting our mind will shift the emotions and what we're going through. I was having an experience of that today. I was starting to feel really contracted about some things and having a difficult time shifting my perspective. And I was kind of going into this old paradigm behavior of like, oh, I don't have enough or, you know, just kind of that contracted way of being. And then I shifted my perspective. And that shift in perspective allowed me to go from this to this. And it wasn't that all of the challenges in my life or the situations in my life disappeared or were resolved. They're all still there, but my perception did a 180 and I feel free and I feel grateful and I feel more abundant in my being. So we have so many things here to support us. Uh, if you haven't listened to it already, you might find listening to my track, Your Powerful Mind, to be helpful. Uh, and there are many other things to support Everything we've spoken about today, self-compassion, love, all of that tenderness, transforming loneliness, so much available. So go ahead and check out the tracks here if you're feeling like you need some, some extra support and TLC until we're together. Okay. Beautiful. Great love, great, great gratitude. Thank you for your light and presence. 